these are error control coding simulations and uh, i will be going for bit error rate versus smr and uh, these matlab simulations are, have been done using these specifications of a computer and uh, the version of matlab is this so we start with the introduction that why do we do simulation there are some plots because random bit errors happen in digital communication and system reliability measure has to be done that can be done by bit error rate calculation so these are called performance analysis curves or der versus snr curves data transmission quality is uh, roughly approximated as uh, you'll have one error in a thousand bits when a thousand bits are transmitted you will have one error for voice signals and for bulk data you will have one error in every a million bits or so so uh, why do we do this 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 line says it all that this is one of the fundamental trade-off um, done in digital communications for the analysis of the system uh, rule of thumb is that you whatever you simulate how, how how much your data is it should have when you receive it and correct it it should have 100 errors in it so there will be the data will be large enough which is realistic now there are two methods to plot this dr versus snr graph eb by n naught why this happens there is a derivation if somebody wants i can share that too but cutting short to the presentation on the simulation we just have two formulas which we need to use to simulate first is theoretical formula we are using dpsk modulation scheme and uh, this is the formula and it it is in terms of error function it gives the probability of error or by giving the region in which the error occurs anyway we'll come to that later and the practical formula is we'll send some amount of bits and those bits we will receive and these received bits we will check if errors have happened errors will happen because in general we will introduce Gaussian noise so let us begin uh, by what is the probability of error or bit error rate in DPSK simulation again this is the final formula that we will be using these are the densities of the bits these these are symbols that are representing the bits and the probability of error is this small region for this bit it is given by this formula uh, so the first simulation is theoretical one in which the we have not coded it there is no forward error control coding scheme involved the rate is one what we are doing here is we are setting the SNR, the signal to noise ratio, which is EB by N naught energy per bit by this noise. Noise is a, a Gaussian noise, which is sigma square variance and zero mean. So we first plot the x axis, then we go for getting values of errors that will be received when the transmission is done at this signal to noise ratio values these signal to noise ratio values so that's why we have applied a for loop and there there is the formula the theoretical formula and uh, it requires the signal a uh, bit uh, the energy per bit to noise ratio which is snr to be converted into v linear scale which is this one so eb by n naught db is our x axis this we have generated here and then we have converted it back to the linear scale by this formula so the that is here and further we have calculated the bit error rate which is given by the probability of error formula that can be found in various texts relevant text and uh, what we need to do is now is that uh, when we run this simulation this for loop plugs in SNR values into this formula and BER is calculated out which is got here 
when I ran the simulation in MATLAB. So these are the bit error rates. So at a very low SLR, the errors are happening to a larger extent than when you increase as compared to the errors that are happening in very small numbers when the signal power is increased. So if signal power is more, you will have less errors. This, and this was plotted in a graph. So this is these are the plotting commands. So when the energy per bit is very low, errors is very high. When we are increasing the energy per bit, the errors are decreasing. This is for Gaussian noise and uh, it is using BPSK bit error rate formula. Rate is set to be 1 because we are not encoding anything. 1 bit comes, 1 bit goes. So this is the final result of simulation. After this, what we do is we encode the signal by some error control coding scheme. Uh, in using the channel decoder encoder and uh, energy is given to a bit which is the transmission bu budget or the design of your system which allocates energy to the bit but after encoding redundant bits are added the bits increased and that's why the energy decreases and it follows this formula again we have to point out that rate has a role in theoretical formula and the role is that as you change the rates the energy will be spread apart and the performance will degrade because energy is now being wasted or in being used in the redundant bits that act that have been added to the message bits so that a error control coding scheme can be implemented which later will be useful when we decode it but just before decoder we will see the degradation of the performance because signal power has been distributed and after channel uh, decoder we will see a better performance because the error correction capability that we have given to the system by implementing a forward error control scheme helps in that so later on that first let's find what happens after detector if we assume that there is no noise and we simulate this this part the the, the part i am hovering over this part only and simulate and get the results here with some rate what we will get so i have done in a single simulation with three different rates rate one rate one by two and one by three what does this mean this is code rate if we have um, one bit we actually encode it into two bits one bit will be parity bit for checking for errors when on receiver and maybe correcting them depends on the coding scheme what features it will provide so at uh, the detector stage where we have not decoded the the signal there is loss in performance because adding redundant bits will make the performance degrade since the signal power will be spread into many bits now let us go to the MATLAB code there these are the three code rates that we are trying to use and simulate this will be our 1 to 10 is our signal to noise ratio again in a for loop I will apply the same formula and plot the results there is this c vector that will get the different uh, curves into different rows and uh, so this will be updated in this loop and uh, this loop will run three times because we have to run it for three different rates after running them we plot it and these these are the uh, results in which when we have not encoded one bit comes one bit is sent there is no extra bit protection bit added so the performance is this but when we add an extra bit the signal to noise power actually degrades and that's why the curve is shifting to the right that means there are more errors suppose we draw a line like this at 6 db this is giving say 
one in a uh, 10,000 bit error, one error in 10,000 bits and at 6 dB, let's say this curve in which we are adding one more bit is giving one error in just 100 bits. So that's why the performance is degrading as we increase the redundancy. But later, after decoding, you will realize that this redundancy actually fights to uh, find the errors and correct them. So detection and correction will happen after the decoding scheme has been implemented. So with different rates, this was the database in MATLAB that was generated by this for loop for rate 1 these were the errors captured rate 1 this was the minimum or the best ber performance and these are the other ones which require a decoder so let's go ahead and see how decoder has to be implemented or what we are doing actually even before going for the decoder let's switch to a practical uh, system Earlier we have been doing theoretical system in which we were using theory formula. Now we will actually send bits. We will send actual bits generated by MATLAB by random function and then we will encode them. I mean we will modulate them and then we will have a rate which is encoding of let us assume there is some FPC scheme. There will be noise and after noise it will be received. The signal will be received as a summation of as a sum of no as a due to the channel noise it will add up and then let let me give an example to explain what happens here suppose this is the input data these are the bits that are being generated in your digital system after they have been source encoded and encrypted and then channel modulation has happened and then the sorry channel encoding has happened and then modulation has been done so here from here we tap the data or we simulate from this point this is that data it has been modulated so this is the modulation a zero is represented by one and a one is represented by minus one which is conventional bpsk modulation it is received and on receiving noise has been added so one has degraded to 0.8 0.2 minus 0.2 noise has affected the original signal and has been received with a little bit of attenuation of minus 0.2 units and here minus 1 has been degraded not uh, very close to uh, killing the original signal and uh, here actually the 1 plus 1 has been degraded so much that it has Pass to negative so this is the received data <coughs> and uh, after that we on the receiver side with threshold there is a threshold detection a hard detection is being done if it is plus we say it is plus if it is minus we say it is minus one so these are actually replicated regenerated as the receiver thinks that this was sent a minus then minus one was sent a one but one uh, has not been correctly reproduced at the receiver because the noise was so much that it forced the signal to uh, flip into the other uh, data representation so that, that's an error so no other place error has happened and this is just an example and this will happen after we generate randomly some input numbers and the code we modulate it then receive it add in addition with noise and then again do the reverse process which is this let's go to the coding part so the practical ber as we have said will generate some bits and we will have some received bits so this is the theoretical plot first the strong line the continuous line it has been plotted by our old code theory which is a theoretical formula and after that we have practical bit error rate now we are having a practical system implemented which means that we will be generating some message bits so these are our global constants that will be th constant throughout the code and we start with a for loop in which we have some local constants and and we what we do is we uh, first of all generate a n bit length message and there is this transmission 
uh, encoding in which we have zeros as plus one and ones as minus one representation and conventional BPSK transmission. We receive them, add some random normal which is Gaussian noise to the signal and these are all randomly generated so it is a good simulation and then we have a receive detection done on hard detection basis then we count the errors that happens in this happen in this loop and we update the total system error so actually we will be running this code um, the the for loop will run 1000 time and each time we will be generate we will dealing we will be dealing with um, this 10000 bit length so the, a block will be of 10000 bits matlab or your computer will be happy to crunch those 10000 bits in a single go and then ne next time again we will do the 10000 bits but this loop that runs again and again has to be done 1000 times so the maths behind this, this is that if we do we run this loop 1000 times then um, each block multiplied to that will have 130 million bits simulated so let me remind you why this 130 million bits is good for simulation as uh, there is a online lecture nep on neptel MOOC by dr andrew thangraj who is the coordinator of Neptel also, which is now a part of Swayam platform. And um, the video lecture at this time, and there is this reference also to that, you will be able to find it easily on uh, a Google, simple Google search for um, the name of that series is LDPC and Polar Codes in 5G Standards. So from there I learned that if you have uh, you have to have this and if you have uh, 2 million bits then the bit error rate will be this which is uh, very close to the acceptable bit error rate which is 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 9 for a good bulk data communication. So with this reference we have our simulation generating 130 million bits which is good enough, large enough and uh, we are updating the total errors also and we are updating the batch errors also the 10,000 bits then this small code I inserted to actually capture the errors that were happening in the first run so there are two for loops there the, uh, the outer loop runs for uh, the SNRs 13 times for first loop it will have 10,000 bits so 10,000 bits will be used with SNR 0 dB to get the bit error rate in the next loop which is here 1 to 13 in the next loop again uh, the SNR let's say 1 will be used to calculate the bit error rate using 10,000 bits those 10,000 bits will be BPSK modulated, received with addition of noise due to channel noise. Then this, there will be hard decision, uh, detection using threshold 0 and 1. So if the value is plus in the plus side, we will say it was a 0 that was transmitted. If the value is on the negative side, whatever the magnitude is, we will say that a 1 was transmitted. This is BPSK modulation theory, which has been coded here in MATLAB code and uh, when this thing ha finishes so we then plot this out and the data is generated and this time I have not shown the data but uh, earlier I have shown so you must have had a good ex uh, experience in what, what, what it will be but anyway rather than data graphs are providing a good picture these are called waterfall graphs which are standard um, graphs used to show the SNR versus bit error rate probability of error in our digital communication system so this is the graph and this graph actually matches the theoretical graph so how, uh, how do I say that there is the strong line of theoretical graph and these circles are actually practical simulations so my practical simulations are overlapping the theoretical simulation that means that MATLAB must have used the formula and uh, must have done the simulation with these many bits so that 
uh, it can generate this graph if i change this let us say i change this to just 10 bits in 10 bits you will you might not get an error so these this curve might sometimes fall here and there so you have to have a good amount of bad uh, bits number of bits so that you can have a more than 100 errors so that will actually um, trace the part, uh, path which is pr happening practically in digital communication system so the simulation has to be matched to what actually happens practically when you have a digital communication system transmitting bits so this is self-explanatory this is plot commands and this is the overall bit error rate which is actually not needed we just needed need bit error rates at different SNR values so having done this let us implement our FEC scheme we will implement more but till now I have done this much only to let us see what are these first we we'll use repetition code which means that every bit will be repeated two three times so that it can be detected by majority rule and this is the digital system model i am using this is the code in this code what i am doing is that i am having this theoretical plot again so this this line this red line is theoretical plot and i this time i'm detecting with two different decisions uh, hard decision threshold decision and a soft decision so these two this whole is one program and these blocks i am trying to explain what is happening in this part of the code so this part of the code is again repetition theoretical plot part which i have already done so these are our global constants then this is the our local constant again we will run the loop for 13 uh, snr values so there there are the 13 snr values will be plotted and um, well again what we have doing here is that we are generating random message bits k size is one message bit and n size is three so we are repeating the same bit two more times and packing it as a coded word in coded word this is the way encoding is done in repetition codes so transmission is done this is a code that i used from the online lecture to convert into upsc transmission then we add the noise and we start receiving so receiving can be done in two ways hard detection so message will be received uh, through hard detection scheme and message will be received through soft detection scheme and um, in hard detection we are just seeing the received bit this is an example to show how this works suppose these three bits are received after addition of noise so one one zero was sent but noise increased one to one point three noise increased one to one point zero four nine four and noise increased zero bit to zero point three the hard detection just looks at it there are two ones so it will decode it as one and uh, soft detection will actually use euclidean distance formula it will they will sum it it will sum it up and uh, the hard and soft decision will sometimes be different because soft decision is a better estimation scheme what is hard and soft de detection in hard detection the quantization levels are only two you say either it is zero or one according to the magnitude uh, seen and uh, in soft detection the quantization levels are more and it will detect a, to a closer value or a more precise value so how this works it is a theoretical that it needs a theoretical explanation that was provided by me in a separate lecture which is not here unfortunately because that is another one hour theory uh, brainstorming which is not appeasing to people because it's already in the books so this soft decision this is this highlighted yellow is an example how received bits are these and we are using sum to count the number of ones and this is the one then this is allocation of this to ones and zeros and then summing up and telling that it was a zero so uh, when this data is collected locally and globally there is an error vector which works on a global basis each loop the errors are uh, accumulated added on 
and bit error rate is calculated for soft and hard decision and the plot is done so this is the plot this is the hard detection and this is the soft detection you can notice that uh, theoretical plot is away from soft and hard detection both so repetition code has not done its job it has not improved the characteristics if you see the ideal curve which tries to bring it somewhere here uh, in current times ldpc codes are doing very well and it, uh, its variants irregular ldpc codes polar codes turbo codes uh, there are so many concatenations higher order codes uh, are being uh, researched and presented which are achieving a very good performance and ideal performance to the curve suggested by sir um shen e shannon and uh, that again not going to the theory part coming back here so repetition code are not good enough for a um, implementation that will help you correct detect errors and give a better performance so repetition code does not provide any coding gain what is coding gain coding gain is the separation in snr and dvs from the theoretical curve to the the practical or the curve that you want to have in test so it can be a coding gain or it can be a, not a coding gain there is no coding gain provided because coding gain comes if the the perform if the curve shifts here and performance is said to improve because at lower snr at lower snr values you are providing same bit error rate characteristics so let us go for hemming code now i after this curve which was for repetition i have got into hemming codes in hemming codes we generate code words this is a 74 hemming code and i have quickly written the code words here which are 16 code words for k equal to 4 bits so 4 bits can be written into combinations of uh, zeros and ones and there are 2 to power 4 there are 16 different combinations 16 different messages which can be encoded into 16 different code word sets which are valid code word and the orthogonal space the uh, the other redundant bit uh, code words are 2 to power 7 and that is not again we need what we need to discuss we just need to implement this using the same paradigm which we are we have been using there is this global uh, let's go to this part in this part we have the message being generated again k bits which is 4 4 bits will be produced and these 4 bits will be encoded using the parity bits that can be fetched from the generator matrix and in generator matrix can be fetched from this code word which is a systematic code word we we'll pick out the identity matrix this is the format identity matrix comes here and these will be the corresponding uh, the number so 1000 is here and these are the parity bits we put the parity bits here so when we multiply this generator matrix with message you will get the code word the message will be 4 bits so this multiplies uh, with this and m1 m2 and m3 will comprise of the parity bits which is here first the message will be systematically placed here as generated and then the parity bits one two three will be placed and it will be generated using this so m1 m2 m3 is the third parity bit m2 m3 m4 m2 m3 m4 will be the oh, second parity bit and uh, m1 m2 and m4 which will be the third parity bit added with four message bits so seven bit code will be generated again transmitted using vpsk modulation received and then hard and soft decision done what we are doing here can be explained using the next slide which is that i am uh, repeating the received message then finding the distance finding the minimum distance giving the code word and soft decision 
there is this correlation formula used the maximum correlation is found and then code word separate uh, message separated from that code word this is how this works and this is this this code is 70% mine and 30% I have which is actually the other way I should say from the online lecture so putting it all together running it and presenting it is all done by me as you can see and as you will see when you see the NEPTEL lecture so this is the result plotted onto a graph clearly showing soft decision is better because it has got more quantization values a better estimate of uh, the errors done and corrected so this is the graph of all three uh, theoretical repetition and hard decision and you can see soft decision handling code is doing the job the in best way and it is a perfect code, hanging code. There are advanced schemes also for a gradual introduction or starting point. These codes are first you are introduced to repetition code, which is the simplest code. Earlier during your B undergraduate courses, uh, you are introduced to parity checking schemes, which parity bits can detect and correct errors, which is with regard to hanging codes. And these are block code category and uh, then we progress on to the other codes which is turbo read soloman non-binary binary and so many codes are there so rather than going there i want to introduce to you one more thing that can be done when you communicate data using light signals uh, lasers we can use an Arduino kit and a solar panel with this specification and a small laser that comes in the toy which I used and uh, this is the setup that was done so I was transmitting some bits through I mean the voltage that was sent was converted into light by the laser and the solar cell picked that signal and sent back to the Arduino and I counted the amount of bits that I sent and received which were sent correctly and which were, uh, were not received correctly actually the distance was so short that all errors all the bits were correct uh, collected and this is these this shows the photos in which i what i did and the uh, bit rate that i achieved was 300 nearly 300 bits per second and uh, that is not actually uh, close to what we should be doing we should be sending 1 gb of data and uh, in that we need to see error so we'll need photodiode a better receiver so solar cell and this whole system is not a very optimized system and uh, what is the maximum bit rate that solar cell can get is found from this uh, there is this uh, lecture online you can go to and see the reference comes out is that in solar cell as a receiver they can achieve we, uh, it can be achieved to the data rate to 7 megabits per second and gbps we need photo diode receiver and maybe some system changes also may be required so this is their hardware this is their transmitter and receiver similarly this is my receiver this is arduino transmitter and uh, this is the light that is being sent so the laser I s that is the red dot that you can see is the laser but actually it is blinking so fast that it was unnoticeable it was just like a switched on light anyway so this is this concludes my presentation thank you